him 616. Our message is from him 616. Stanza 1, 5, and 6. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow. So the message this morning is, O oh Lord, take my will. What this hymn writer is in essence saying is that, Lord, I give up my will to accept your own will. That is, Lord, I give up my will to accept your own will. That's what this hymn writer is actually saying. When he said, oh Lord, take my will. The will of man simply means man's choice or desire. That is, a man's will is his choice or desire. Why God's will means God's choice or desire. I repeat, the will of a man simply means a man's choice or desire. Why that of God is God's own choice or desire for man? It is therefore very important to know if whatever we want to do in life is the will of God or not. Because God's choice is the best. And that is why the Spirit of God advises all of us to acknowledge this Lord God in all our ways. And the Holy Spirit will surely direct us into doing that which is the will of God. So that it can be well with us and with our soul. But most times, the will of God in the sight of men look foolish. They look unpleasant. Yes, it is best for us as children. Now, let's look at certain characters in the Bible who are to give up their own will to accept the will of God. Matthew 26. First, we look at Jesus. Matthew 26, verse 39. Verse 39. Yes. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Nevertheless, Jesus Christ said, not as I will, but what? According to your own will, God. Because your will is the best. 
Now, let's look at another prophet in the Bible. Ezekiel 4, verse 12. Verse 12. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dungs that come out of man in their sight. Then read 14 to 15 now. Verse 14 to 15. Yes. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, my soul had not been polluted, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which died of itself, or is torn in pieces. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. And he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Now, read John 6, another example of those who accepted the will of God. We are going, coming to the point. John 6, 53 to 56. John 6, 53 to 56. Yes. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh up my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Now, these three characters we have just read about now, Jesus, Prophet Ezekiel, and these 70 disciples. The will of God for them, first for Jesus, was that he should suffer and die for the sins of man. The will of God for that prophet, Ezekiel, for him was that he should eat either man's dung or cow's dung. You know what I mean by dung? Feces. And the will of God for this same example was that if they must inherit eternal life, they must eat the flesh of Jesus and drink the blood of Jesus. That was the will of God for all this character we just read now. Jesus and Prophet Ezekiel accepted to do the will of God. Even though to Prophet Ezekiel it was not palatable to eat feces and bake it. Yet it was the will of God for him to do it. And he had to do accept that will of God, whether it was palatable or sweet or bitter. We are talking about the will of God. Why some of the seven disciples, which we just read about, some did not believe that the will of God was for them to eat flesh and drink blood. And so they did not accept the will of God that will have given them eternal life. God thoughts towards his children and never thoughts of evil. Take note of that. So he got to Prophet Ezekiel to eat dung, dung of cow, of man. Is it a wicked God? No, we can't say it's wicked. But that was the will of God for them. Yet, they accepted the will of God, even though it was not a sweet experience and it was not palatable. We are talking about the will of God. We must know that God's thoughts, whatever he asks you to do, his thoughts towards you, they are not of evil. Whatever is the will of God for your life, they are not thoughts of what? Of evil. They are thoughts of peace, good things, to give those who will do his will an expected end. Is it sweet experience to eat feces? Eh? No. But they know that the thoughts of God towards them, they are not thoughts of evil. They are thoughts of peace. And so they did what? They accepted the will of God and obeyed and did the will of God. But the will of God is never pleasant, like I said before, to men. Most times, not accepted to man. But they obeyed. Jesus had to give up his own will to do his father's will. Prophet Ezekiel, even though eating dung of man or cow was not a pleasant thing, yet he was not rebellious or stubborn to this will of God. And we must know that rebellion and stubbornness to the will of God is as a sin of what? Witchcraft and what? Iniquity and idolatry. 
to obey the will of God, no matter how unpleasant it is to you, whether you believe you accept it or not, whether it's sweet or not, it's better than any other sacrifices that you are offering to God. Whether an sacrifice of praise so, or prayer so, sacrifice of fasting, no? to obey the will of God for your life is better than what? That sacrifice you are rendering to God. And those who often resist the will of God, it means they don't have the spirit of Christ in them. Because if they have the spirit of Christ, they will not resist and reject the will of God. Why? Because Christ did the will of his father and gave up his own way to do his father's will. So if you are rejecting, resisting the will of God for your life, it means you don't have the spirit of Christ in you. Now, King Pharaoh, whose heart God had in his heart, not to obey his will. And so when Moses came to King Pharaoh to obey the will of God, to let Israel go, but in his pride, what did he say to Moses? Exodus 5, verse 2. Wait until tell Moses. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. King Pharaoh said, Who is our God? Where they talk? Where they say, I are doing will. To let Israel go? I don't know that, Lord. What am I saying? Anyone will reject the will of God or refuse to let go his own will for that of God. Is proud. And that person, you see that he's saying, who is that God that I should accept his will? That's what I say in my inference. Is that the will of God? Who is that God that I should accept his will? You are like Pharaoh, and you are proud. It's pride. To reject the will of God is what? It's pride in the sight of God. And he says, such will never go unpunished. Because the proud people are abomination to God. And so if you are proud and you reject the will of God for your life, in the sight of God, he said you will not go unpunished. Proverbs 16, verse 5. Proverbs 16, verse 5. Everyone that is proud in the heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. The proud in heart will always reject the will of God for their life. This is the will of God. Is that the will of God? No, I reject it. I don't want the will of God. No man will now undo. That person is proud. And let that person not think that they will enter heaven. No. Because heaven is meant for whom? For the humble. Let's see what Jesus Christ said about heaven. Matthew 18. 18, 3 to 4. 18, 18 3 to 4. Verse 3 to 4. Yes. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever humble himself shall do what? Enter where? And shall be the greatest in heaven. But the proud who reject the will of God for his life because of his pride. I don't want the will. Is it the will of God? I don't want. No man will not want to do. You are proud. You see, such person will never do what? Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only the humble will be allowed to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The will of God will always work out together for good for those who love God because they are always willing to do the will of God. Those who love God are always doing what? Willing to do what? The will of God. And everything about them work together for good. All things work together for their good. Because they love God. And they are ready to do the will of God. Now, some children of Israel, they came to Prophet Jeremiah to see the will of God. If they should go to Egypt to stay there. And in verse 6 of Jeremiah 42. Yes. Verse 6. He's talking about children of God who came to seek cancer, to seek the will of God. If they should go to Egypt to stay there or not. Yes. 
Jeremiah 42, verse 6. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us. When we obey the voice of the Lord our God, these children of Israel knew that it would be well with them if they obeyed the will of God. They were very conscious that they knew that. When the servant of God now told them the will of God, that they should not go to Egypt, but should remain in Judah, where he will bless them. They finally rejected the will of God and went to Egypt, where they all died, as the servant of God said. They died where? In Egypt. They rejected the will of God and went to Egypt and died in Egypt, all of them. Now, look at the reply they gave to the servant of God. After they had decided to do their own will to go to Egypt, Jeremiah 43, 1 to 2. 1 to 2. This is 1 to 2. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words, then spake Azariah, the son of Hashiah, and Johanan, the son of Keriah, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest firstly, the Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. All the proud men said, God did not send you. That is not the will of God for Allah. We don't believe. Prophet, you are a liar. Rejected what? The will of God for their lives. And so they left for Egypt. And they died there. Look. Remember Edwin Melek and his wife Naomi. This one saw the will of God. But Edwin Melek and Naomi, they went to Moab without seeking the will of God for their life. And they died there. They did not even return back. The man and the two sons. So what are you saying? Exodus 6, verse 12. Ecclesiastic 6, verse 12. Verse 12. For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life, which is spended as a shadow. And who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Who can tell a man what shall be the future? Who can tell a man what is good for man? Not only God. Only God knows what is good for you. Only God knows the future. Who can tell you what will happen in the future? Not only that God, now we will seeking way to do his way. Because he knows the future. He knows what is good for you. We don't know what is good for ourselves. In Proverbs 14, verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right unto a man. The end thereof are what? Are the ways of death. So also, the will of man may seem right to a man. But the end of that will of man will be what? Death. The cases of Elimelech and this city of Israel went to Egypt was physical death. But everybody will reject the will of God to do his own will. We always experience what? Spiritual death. You know why we experience spiritual death? Because God will allow that your will. Eh? He will send what? Leanness what? To your soul. That's why you experience spiritual death. Anybody will reject the will of God for his own will. Say, now my will, now I want to do. In the end, what will happen to you? You experience what? Spiritual death. Because God will allow you to go with your will. Eh? You reject my own will. But be sure I will send the next word to your soul. And you will die spiritually. That's more dangerous than physical death. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. The end of that will of man are what? Death. Sexual death. Satan will always fight against God's will for our lives. And so we will be watchful and prayerful. If Satan will say, this is not the will of God for your life, eh? you go do it. You will fight against that will of God. So you will be watchful and prayerful. Once you know the will of God, be watchful and prayerful so that the devil will not divert that will of God to another direction. Then in the end, you go and suffer spiritual death because you are rejected the will of God. I want you to know today that the will of God 
for everyone who has come to the knowledge of this truth in this church is that they should first seek the kingdom of God by allowing their soul to be purified by this word of truth that they hear. After which all of that things shall be added unto them. I repeat, the will of God for everyone that comes to the knowledge of the truth in this church is first and foremost to do what? To seek what? First, the kingdom of God. Abi? And in what? And in righteousness. Thereafter, God will add more and more things that you wish. So you must be patient enough to wait and let God purify your soul as you hear the word of truth. Then by, by which you will define, you will come do it in. As we are Jara. That's the will of God for our lives. Those who will come to this truth, be patient. He's working upon your soul first. By and by, the thing we will find come. He will do it in. He will add that to you. So the truth of God is advising us this morning that we should believe in the Lord, our God, who alone knows the will for your life and you shall be established in righteousness. Believe also his prophets to whom his will is made known to you and that shall prosper. I repeat, the Spirit of God is advising us to do what? To believe what? In the Lord your God. Who knows the best is only for your life. And the prophets through whom God will reveal his feet to you. Believe them also. Then you do what? You will prosper. Finally, the will of man. If they make man, they wonder out of the world of understanding. And eventually, the person will find himself in the congregation of the spiritually dead. I repeat, the will of man will make that man to wander out of the will of what? Of understanding. And he will eventually find himself where? Among the spiritually dead. Where we say they don't get life in them. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That is your own will. We make you to do what? If you reject the will of God and hold fast to your will, you wander out of the way of understanding. And eventually you find yourself in the congregation of what? Those who are dead spiritually, who have no life in them, no heaven in you, who are on their way to hell. Now they will find yourself among them. Now, Romans 12. Look at what the Spirit of God is advising us here. Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Yes. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Of your mind. So I can prove that which is acceptable will of God for your life. And now, as I said before, if you reject God's will and hold fast to your will, Wait I talk. I say God will send what? Leanness to your soul. And you experience what? Spiritual death. Psalm 106. We'll read that now. Psalm 106, verse 15. God can give you your heart's will, your heart desire. Say now your will be that. You want your will, you will reject my will. Okay, go ahead with your will. Look at what you have to you. I'm going to send what? Leanness to your soul. And you experience spiritual death. Yes, Psalm 106, verse 15. 106, verse 15. Yes. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. He gave them their will, allowed them to go with their will, their desire, their choice. But he did what? He sent leanness to their soul, that it experienced which are dead. May God help us to understand what God is saying to us this morning. That is, choose the will of God and let go your own will. It will not profit you anything. Your own will we make you wonder out of your understanding. Your own will will bring leanness to your soul. Your own will will cause spiritual death. Let go your will and accept the will of God for your life. And it shall be well with your soul and it shall prosper. Let us stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we have heard your word. Lord, we surrender our will to you today. 
as prophet Ezekiel surrendered his will. Lord Jesus, you surrendered your will. Though painful, teach us to accept your will. In the name of Jesus. So that we will not wander out of the way of understanding. May we not wander into the congregation of the spiritually dead. May we not die spiritually because of stubbornness, resisting your will, rejecting your will. Lord, may it not lead us to spiritual death. In the name of Jesus, we want to live spiritually. We want to be alive spiritually. Therefore, teach us to accept your will. Give us the grace to accept your will. As many of us that are contending with your will for our lives, give us the grace to surrender. In the name of Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord, to surrender. In the name of Jesus. And help us to repent. Give up our will. And accept your will. That it may be well with us. And that we may enter heaven at last. Mighty God, hear and answer this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.